Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Xanatos Plays. Last time we were starving, starving and more starving and nobody seems to get a but look. You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that Vars have gathered. I will join you as you approach. Uben, you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a meat house than battling a sunder? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. Don't even know what you talk worried about, I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, put out a verse in the dreads, they follow you into the hills, get lost, and they're not following you. When you did this a hundred years ago, a hundred times, did they have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? You're, uh, planning to confront the dreads? Careful, my friend, a lot of world history getting turned around here. The warriors were just noting that there's a darn good number of dreads now, but... Bellower holding up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? Thought you'd be happy... You'd be happy to find him be the oldest bar in the land, Uben. Oh, I do remember that conversation. Do you guys remember that conversation a while back? He was talking about how he was competing with someone. To be the oldest dread alive. I'm never happy to lose more of our Akuma. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. Um, nobody's going anywhere. Ha, huh, that might work on either little one. I'm not asking for your blessing. In the old days, I'd already be halfway up the battlefield by now. Speaking of which, you coming in, Gavar? You could ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so. Not as luck in the mood right now. Alright then, I'll tell Hardenberg you said hello. No. I made you strong. Don't abandon me. Soon when a good many of our warriors head out towards the growing army of dreads. Is it going to come back? You always have before. But this time feels different, I feel. Can't I do anything? I would have gone to fight with him. Was there really no way I could go get around that? I liked that character a lot. First Gnarf dies, now he dies, but Gnarf, I power over the situation. I could have saved him if I'd been smarter, but a gaunt man and woman approached the caravan, hands held high. Wood friends, the man said, we are poor farmers not on our luck. The woman hits him and says, we're outlaws plain and simple, ten of us, and we'll help you in a fight with some food up front. We don't have any food, dude. What are your crimes? Misunderstandings, the man said. Meat houses are confusing. Never know when you drank your share. The woman hits him again and says, we've stolen killed a few when we had to. Scarce might benefit you out here. A journalist, but you'll be watched. The two quickly shuffle to a supply wagon, as eight more bandits emerge in the wilderness. They gird to themselves and salted fish and cheese, taking time to thank everyone. After eating, they politely keep to themselves. Imagine they're eating, you mean? Because I don't have any supplies. At all. Also, I don't have any vial. Once I, I guess, didn't leave with him, starved to death. Yes! Yes! Yay, I'm so happy. Gather around, doubters! Echoes a shout in the distance as Kuma and his band of warriors break the nearby foliage. And behold, the invincible vile! The caravan is still as the Kuma returns safely. Did the, did the plan work? Asked Ubin. Work? Responds Kuma. Of course it worked. Same more dreads. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own butts. So 20. Wow! And if you apologize, I'll tell you how I found these, Kuma says, tossing you a pair of leather gloves that look big enough for a vial. He leans in close, whispers so Uben, so Uben can't hear him. Had something to do with the raven's nest and the hair tie. I feel like I did something there. Well, why would they give me 20? I mean, that's a lot. Get back up to Kuma. For that, you would deserve to be promoted. There we go. Level 4. Okay, um... One of those and one of those. I'll match that both in the next round. Now we can break 6. Eight. You can break eight in one turn. I wish there was a way to buy food with some of the renown it gave me. I can't rest. If I rest, people will die. So, we press on. I think we're almost there. Stop starving! As Sacred Home approaches, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud home sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake? What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? I don't know. But our little brigade has been has gone many days without food. So many people have starved. And yet, I've managed to keep us with a... A what is it? A normal morale. You know how insane it is that we went through everything we just went through and our morale is normal. So much diving to death has, has happened. 
One catastrophe after another, says Oddleaf as she pulls into Sleeker home. Tom appears to be sinking into the lake. Tom through a peek from the dark windows and makes it over us further up the hill. Why is everybody hiding? Are there, uh, are there bad guys here? No, says Ivan, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here, and you get the creeping feeling you're not welcome either. Going up river looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You, reluct you reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait? While taking stock of the caravan, you inadvertently walked into a debate between Ardleaf and Ivan. As long as we need to. Last thing we need to get out of here, I don't forget about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel good. The people here are staring at us like these, like those vultures in the waist. I saw Ivan. I think Ardleaf's right. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. Uh, in a creepy way. Not long before the dread find is here. Juno will come. Just give it a little more time. Look, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. Okay, let's talk to him. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno. Worry well, doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here or something has happened to her, are you sure what you saw was real? Could have been a dream or... I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I... I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Um, don't tell you that I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. Okay, um... What's it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very young that I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father both menders. The guild is for a lot of people now, builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, 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 that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this, so we don't end up scaring people. How exactly does weeping work, anyway? Weaving? Weaving. Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the th seeing the threads. Oh, we Oh, like, like back in the other level when I was actually using him, all the weird threads and stuff that were in the sky, and I was like, what's that all about? Okay. Maybe that's how they use magic in this world? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of a tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for instance. Some members have intricate patterns in the woods to help them remember the shapes of... Uh, like I said, hard to explain. Why is Bella still following us? I saw girl from as it burned. I think it's a faraway look in his eyes. The thunder blew through it like a tempest. The fire fell in thousands. Most of the thunder left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to or heading toward Arborang. Bella was dating Grofheim, just for the support of it, I think. As we fled the Iron Torch, I thought he would might, might want to wipe the ball out of the map completely, but then they came after us. Maybe he knew I was from the good race. Maybe, but I... Let's... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. You think this is the end times? I... I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dreads, that serpent said that darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long this will take. What it means, even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The men are on our brain. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or thunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending? Now, do I have to leave? I would be willing to- I would be willing to wait. I would definitely, definitely be willing to wait. Okay, I should probably not have. I feel really dumb. I should not have done that. I didn't even get a day's worth of those ones I bought. But I need. I needed them. Do I have to leave? Look, wait, please, Ivan begs. Said she'd be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving, as though he's giving up on. as though he'd be giving up on Juno. Okay, just a little longer. You tell Ivan you'll stick out a little longer, but you're not certain how long you're willing to wait. Every day lost becomes more precious. Um. Best? A shovel is broken down from the houses. Thief! Shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. I'll leave with all you going in the direction. They took our supplies here from nearby. It's the thieves. Come on, you shout, and several join you in the chase. You wander onto a beach where some men have been waiting for you. Some tourists with your exchange about whether anything had been stolen or not. You don't see the door the first weapon, but it ends with the conversation dead. You. People. Are dead. You don't. Get. To rob me? 
You don't get to steal from me. What you do get to do though. I want him up there. You can go down there. You can go there. You can go... No, I don't want you there. Okay. Ready. Humans are no match for me. I don't know what they're thinking. This one is a threat. Oh wow. Oh, oops, dude. He has a stone wall, He's, I can't attack him. Get over here. I don't want to lose a single man here. 15, 16... I can use 2 now, so... Oh, that's 19. That's 17. Bam! <laughs> oh, wow! We've been fighting dreads, you dogs. Only an idiot would try to rob us. Hang on. Okay. I accidentally used to. Didn't mean to use to. <sighs> These silly people. I'm gonna slaughter them. Oh, he doesn't really. He, he knows he should be able to hurt me, but he can't because I have two resistance. That is awesome. Got that one. Okay. And finish him off. When fighting dread, it's hard to forget how powerful we are. We just like crushed them beneath our toes. <laughs> the thieves scatter pretty quickly when you start laying into them, but when you return to the caravan, you discover why. Even more supplies have gone missing since you got started to fight. And we're back to starving. I uh, hate this, but we can't die. A random assortment of people from the caravan confront you. Listen, says one, we don't feel safe here. I don't know anything about menus or whatever, but we're going to leave and I hope you'll join us. Just like a couple dozen people, farmers and fighters alike, go the same way. Wish them well. You give me your blessing, but explain why you can't leave just yet. You don't know where they're going, but hope you'll meet them again on the road as they start to trek back across dry land. I'm not going anywhere. Did I make a bad choice? Am I just gonna die here? Are there any more cutscenes? Oh, well... Um... Going back. Apparently. Apparently. Yes. Apparently Juno will never get here. So if I just waste all of my supplies, it won't do me any good. Let's head out. Brooke, wait, please, Ivan begs. Just let you be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving. Just as though, as though, he'd, given, as though he'd given up on Juno. Dude. <sighs> I want to wait with you too, but I literally we're gonna die because she's not coming. So I'm sure she'll catch up with us. Ivan looks out across the lake with a thousand miles there. There's nothing. We've got problems, says Ivan. The whole place is flooded. 
We could just try to walk the muddy parts, but they'll be slow going. We could try to float the cavern over the lake, but we might get tables get stuck. We could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'll take. What do you think? Uh, isn't Locust to help? A local would become a lot more helpful when you swallow your pride and start offering food for help across the river. They give you small fishing boats to borrow and show you the area with the best chance of making a cross. I hope you look for as as they launch across the shore. Despite, or you suspect because of your vigilance, the locals are searching for don't try anything underhanded as they take you in their small boats to the other side of the lake over several trips. You leave them in a generous amount of food and they go back to their town. You hope it's waiting to buy some space from Bellower, who will have to drag his arm into the mud on foot. Okay. We have six days of food left, and I hope we don't die. He, for all this time with us, hasn't killed very many people. He's also the only one of us who can still promote. Both of them need three people. He needs a ton. These two are ready. Uh, he might actually be ready for level. He might actually be left. He's almost ready for level five, and he is killed more than anybody else. Wow. I just don't have enough renown to go around. One time. Okay. Let's leave. I want to try and keep us from having poor because poor hurts me. Let me once more point out just how pretty this land is. With its trees and its snow and... Una, the quirky old man with the leather headband, says, If there's one thing I know better than better than women and meat, it's... Well, he smiles. Well, nothing. Oh yeah, this is that. I remember him. But I know when a group could use some help, just not let old Unar make everything better, no questions asked. I would appreciate your help. That evening, Unar clears the third and loudly recites a tale of travelers, ending with war and death behind them, seeking hope instead. The carry on with courage, using heart and head. Is he a bard? A strange poem, but the cavern is happy for a change of pace. Unar bows and returns to the cooks. The evening's meal is larger than ever. The supply wagon seems more full than before. You thank Unar, but he is gone. Wait, what? Who was that guy? He just. Do you know how much money I had to spend to get what I- Wow. Wow. Who was that guy? As you're about to head off to sleep at night, Oh no, puts you aside. I have a couple concerns I want to speak to you about, he says. In private. When a quiet place to talk. Yes, Onaf? What's on your mind? How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many students are in the caravan now? Uh... Is this a party kill? That's an obvious example. I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skoka, they're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they died to protect you. I suppose I'd do the same. But the Vile, you don't even know half those warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened to Iron Tart? They did? Join us voluntarily. And they might voluntarily put a sword in your gut too. What happens the first time the Vile don't want to do what you taught them? If Kuma gives the word, I guarantee at least half of them would follow. I trust Kuma with my life. Let's be honest, they could take care of him by force any time if they wanted to. They haven't. Doesn't mean they won't. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a Mender with us. A Mender who pours lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Yeah, but, I mean, without him, we wouldn't have any direction at all. Myself, I think we lucked out when this Mender didn't show up and stick home. I have insisted the apprentice? What in the depth is this master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Ivan? I hear they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dread started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Ivan Tarf after turning the world in half? Takes one look at Ivan and Bots? Suddenly need our help instead of the Mender Council? How does that make any sense? Haha. <laughs> Ivan could have taken control long before now. A shrewd man with ambitions can be very patient. I'm grateful for what you've done get us this far look, but it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. <gasps> Suddenly you gasp where when you look down only was holding a knife deep in your ribs. The vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Onaf's fingers from philosopher leap into action, cutting people down. As Old Leaf turns to fire on a man, Onaf runs it through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking his sword. She drops like a sack of flour. In one clean motion, his blade then takes easily in the throat before the boy can grab his shield. Onaf's head safe with Elite before he's an unbeatable terror. He, for all this time with us, hasn't killed very many people. What? You guys see your feet through the pain. Each and ugly for dead. Somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest trailer in two, but you can't find the strength to shout. Think the lungs might be punctured. Oh, enough clutch the left wrist to get Mr. Motion, tosses the bow aside and pulls in the deep woods. The last me yours across the campsite. No, her eyes, lips whisper. Do you can't hear the words? A dozen men appear before you as I will step into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen them. Um, this is bad. This is bad. That suddenly took a turn very, very, 
very for the worst. No, no, no. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm totally breaking the rule and everything, but just, just no. No. I'm gonna see if there's any way I can get around that. Any way at all. Because that's like, that's my entire team. I just spent this entire time building that team. We have picked up quite a few. To be more cautious. Or we can make clues and charge here. So I'm the first in the bottom. Which is success. I suggest going in the bottom will be not worse at work. That's not a big problem though. You might, you made some valid points. Put you have made on your own. I'm careful what you've done to us. No. 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 Ugh. I'm gonna kill him. I... I'm going... to kill him. Where is he? Where is that? Is he not here? He's not here. Seriously? <sighs> of all the people, I didn't expect to betray him. He was on the top of my list. He will pay. He will pay dearly. I will run him out of existence. How are you guys managing the... Oh, luck. Nothing but luck. Nothing but bad luck on my part. It's how they're managing to hurt me. They can always hurt me with bad luck. Hang on. Okay. I don't even know these characters. Whoa. Okay. Oddly. Oh. Cast lightning down. Cast lightning down on him. Oh no. Go. Ow, 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 wow. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, zoom in. I'm too far out. Alright. Now I'm too far in. I can't believe that happened. This game was already hard enough for... Ikea warned me. So many times. Not to trust that guy. Hey, but not the way. Bloody fear, go. Ha. Okay. Are there two opponents left? Three opponents left. Wait, so. If I cast thunder right here, it hurt both of them. Am I right? Ow, oh, it hurt. You just. You just. He just took himself out. <laughs> Oops. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. Attack him. Like that. And like that. I mean... Just one or two turns ago, this would have... But well, you saw I slaughtered those brigands. I just obliterated them. Bloody flare, go. Yes. Ow. Oh, stupid. Stupid idiot. Ivor is ready for promotion. And Ivan was defeated. He took himself out. Where is Alette? Shouts Ivor turning to the nearby bandit. But you've already hobbling into the deep woods where they disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haste of pain, you start to think you've lost the tracks. Then you hear Alette screaming in the distance, followed by silence. He turns to the trees. In a small clearing, Alette lies with her back against the tree. Her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stays wriggling her head, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onaf, an arrow buried into his right eyes if placed there by hand. He looked in your direction and at Onaf. I killed him, she said. Uh, Alet, are you alright? You cringe as much in the pain as the appearance of Alet after a bloody struggle with Onaf. No, I'm... I'm not hurt. I had no choice. Dad, your chest, you're bleeding. Suddenly she's at your side, putting pressure on the wound. I can... I can fix this. Where's my needle? Oh, oh I'll leave. Anyone? Ivor, I found them. This is just like those black. See Ivan, Ivor, and the lad standing over you. He's going to make it? You guys open the sound of a lad's voice. Normally a wound like that. I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! The lad stopped stuff from hugging your bandage. Water. Now, when I said a little, a little earlier in this episode, that if he survived, I would let him marry my daughter. I really thought Elliot would survive. He was the one who had a crush on her, Alet. Came from the home village with us. With a nobody and trained himself to be one of my most powerful warriors. A dread murderer, a dread slaughterer. My own fault. I trusted that man. I trusted him. I can't believe. Huh. I'd leave. So, your boyfriend's dead and his girlfriend's dead. My ships are dead. Alet stops herself from hugging your bandit's chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Odd leaf? <gasps> it's, a, it's a good thing Ivan was here. She's going to pour through. There was a nasty wound. We managed to kill most of those traitorous sons of beaches and grass, and the rest fled into the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Ivan. Nobody's supposed to raise the dead. Ivan found sleepily, putting a hand to his forehead. Why didn't Onaf do it, this work? He was talking to you right before it happened. He thought my leadership would get us killed. Utter bas bastard, all this time we had no idea. He killed a good half dozen of Onaf's men by himself. He told me Onaf was running Frostfell the whole time. He left Frostfell behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. He was always just a biking dog you put in the yard to find who your enemies were. There was no action Onaf went after those of us from Skoger. He must have thought he's gone. He's taking the banner and the rest of the line. Well, it works to take the other splash from himself and leave the rest of us as dredge bait. We have to be more careful. We can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. No, nothing changes. We're not like him. You're a, you're a better person than I, Rook. None of this changes the fact that Bellow is out there somewhere, following us. That's why we're going to sugar home. Might buy some time, but we've got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, Will, but I was right. The road cost. The caravan is already starting to pack up camp. I'm going to assume Elliot is dead? They said other men to survive, but they couldn't save everyone. So happy she's not dead. I can't even explain how happy I am that she's not dead. But your boyfriend, your boyfriend is dead. You kill? Joining my group. The character leaves to great heights before bringing down his axe on the enemy, causing all units adjacent to him to be knocked back. Prender four. Affected units take normal strength damage plus one strength damage for each tile they are pushed. Okay. Look. Ivor. Puma. Odd leaf. Oh yeah. You. I got your brother killed. I'm surprised you don't hate me. 
do. I mean, I didn't get a way to kill on purpose and I wasn't being reckless. We needed to do it. Maybe you understand that. Now, it would be make sense to give it to you, but I'm giving it to her. Okay. This is we've promoted again. She is my tank. She's my invincible warrior. I'm nothing without her. Ooh, I've agreed to become level 5 too. <sighs> okay, this is going to listen plus to aggro. That works very well for you. I like that. But this also looks really nice. I think I'd rather have you have that on it. I have level 1 and level 2. One strength resistance. Which of you has works? Actually, you worth the same amount of armor. Give it to him. Oh, I can't. Oops. I just got these then. 1. Boost armor. Armor, strength, and will. Give that to we kill. Give the break to him. Okay, my new team has been fully equipped. I'm going to miss. Uh, look who it is! They're not dead! How are things, Rook? I can never guess with you, we kill. I heard you helped drive off the trade with no nephew attacked us. And it leaves me always wondering, what's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why didn't you try asking instead of telling? Why didn't you worry about a nephew? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What do you want me to say? Watch out, or never gonna murder your whole family. He didn't fill me in on the details. He was always like that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to convince you to off me. But listen, I don't need to know. So keep it to yourself. We could use a good fight, I'm buying you kill. Could have killed a lot more than without my hands bound, if that's what you mean. So look, I don't have to be a prisoner anymore? So you're gonna let me walk around with my own ass and everything? That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that. You're a good man. Why did you stick with him? I don't know, Rook. Family makes you do weird things. You know what the worst part is? We became king when he married my sister. She died of a fever one night. But she didn't. I wasn't sick. He killed her. Told us that. I believe you now. I'm sorry I didn't do earlier. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so fierce. I got so angry that I... I wanted him to beg. I could kill him without a second thought. But that... That wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it. Puke his guts out. And somehow, somehow that turned into... Over time... He never cared, and I gave up and did what he wanted. Don't know how it happened. When I attacked him in Frostburg, guess I'd say it wasn't my idea. I need to get going, and I need to piss. You're not the only busy man around here, you know? You shake your head as you're steps away from camp. Isn't it kinda odd that he was added over here before I unbound him? And he didn't get any stronger after I did? Wait, what? 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 What just, ha what just happened? I thought I clicked on you, why am I getting ready for battle? I mean... I'm ready, let's go. I already set my team up. I don't know what's going Um... I don't know what's going on. You get over there. You... There, you... There... You there... You kill. You're not very strong yet. I want you over here. Alright, let's go. What is going on? Alright. Kill her. They wasn't like even a story or anything. Shouldn't they have said why we were fighting? 21. 14. Okay. There's no reason to rush your head. Hit them hard enough and their friends will feel it. Oh. Did I actually go to I accidentally went to training, didn't I? Is there no is there no way to leave? Okay. I really don't need training. I can only, I can only drop 7 to her. I can drop the 13 damage. That's how it works. Okay. In that case, move over here. I don't know how to exit training mode, but... It's fine. We can the strongest, the rest will follow. So really no way for me to quit this. Okay. Okay, fine. You kill good over here. This is an insane battle. You'd think it would... Uh, I don't know why. I don't say you'd think it would be easy, but why... Why 
Wow. Why would you think training was easy? If training was easy. Whoa. There'd be no point in that. I said there was no need for training, but I'm starting to wonder if I'm gonna die here. Ow. Go here. Kill. Kill him. Yeah, hang on. Mo. Wait, I wasn't supposed to. I'm not supposed to get experience for killing in the training room. I am in the training room, right? Because if not, I have so many questions. I mean... I'm afraid you guys have to... Oh! There we go. In training. Does... Training help you level up? They said it wouldn't, but now I'm confused. I want to talk to her. How is the wound? You notice oddly wince as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure. Ah, uh, but I'm glad you're. You would have missed me, look. She smiles. Lord Ivan, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put up with my crap a little longer. Still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, maybe you would. Who you took a stab in yourself? I guess things could have gone worse. A lot worse. What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out of it? That's a tough one. Usually, I'd be the first one to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. I'll leave things for a long moment before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. Sometimes it's lonely since my husband died. I guess I'd say it's more like being alone, even surrounded by all these people. Not like I don't have enough to worry about, though. I'm glad I have a letter around. And you, Rook. I'll let you get some rest. Okay, thank you. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean. I'll talk to you later. Stupid. Stupid. Ungrateful. Punks. Stupid ungrateful punks. The scout returns with a nearly frozen child. I almost stepped out on her, stepped on her in the snow. Looks like she must have been running for, running from something. He says, patches of blue model of pale skin, but it's just rising the parts ever so slightly. Even just carrying her along would kill her in a state like this. As a woman, we could be in danger here. Punch out another. No more deaths. And see what is here. One hour, you shout. Look for any other survivors. Pillars, do what you can. A fire flares to life as far as the scouts lead. We search this fruit this and you turn to a fully settled camp. The hill is still fussed with the girl's blankets, but it looks hopeful as she'll pour through. The next day, you set out again. What's happening now? The villagers here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you, aside from a few young families who are reluctant to pick up their things and join you. Why are my... Why are they joining me? Um... They didn't have much problem with starving to death with the... 
dying. Wonder why. I'm not gonna let it go below normal, but Thieving Bastards! You you awake to hear? A small band of outlaws who had previously joined the cave and made off with a substantial number of supplies that everyone slept, a watchman tells you. And we're starving again. I'm too nice. Several women are talk talking expressively at the young girl found nearly frozen to death. Not called Arkfroster. Bright Charles' face expresses quiet quiet hair, aggressively stabbing at the dirt with a stick, with which he clearly used to draw on the ground. The the drawings. The marks are somewhat intricate. Grills and circles could be wagons, including a depiction of a yacht in front. A line from the locks leads to a deeper gouge where Arkfroster has jabbed the stick repeatedly. Depending on how you look at it though, it could be almost not anything. I talk to Arkfroster. You're safe, Arkfroster, you say, looking at the girl's blue eyes. She calms a bit before stepping towards you, using her stick to point at the deep gouge in the ground. She previously made, she whispers, Edge, Edge, Edge. Doesn't mean anything to you, but you feel like you connected with her a bit. <laughs> and every time I think I finally have supplies, someone takes them away. Every time I'm like, oh, finally, supplies are good, we don't need to worry about them anymore. Boom, someone else steals them from us. Again, and again, over and over and over again. I buy it and I lose, and I buy it and I lose, and I buy it and I lose. It's crazy. Anyways, we'll stop here. We'll stop here. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Because your words mean so much to me. As always, guys. Have an awesome day. Ta-ta.